Hello and welcome to Video Revealed. I'm Colin Smith. This is essential for anyone today in working with media and graphics, motion graphics, video editing. This is demystifying mats, masks, and alpha channels. This one is based on all the questions I get about how to remove the background. How do I get rid of this? How do I isolate this? First of all, if you don't have green screen and you need to rotoscope, that means drawing a mask around every single frame, if you've never done that before, get ready for a nightmare. What looks incredibly simple in a visual effects reel or on television or behind the scenes is brutally difficult. But what I wanted to do is I wanted to clarify all the different terms for isolating a part of an image. And that's all of these text techniques are the exact same thing. They're isolating. Isolate the background, isolate the shirt, isolate the skin, isolate that, remove that, move that. All of that stuff uses different techniques. I'm gonna show you in Photoshop and in Premiere Pro and After Effects. I wanna start by defining the term matte, and that means to matte something out or to block something out. Here's a perfect example. This guy is in this scene in Paris, but actually that's what was shot and the rest was blacked out so that when they put the matte painting in, he's going to fit right inside of there. That's with glass and matte paintings, that goes way back. But that's how things used to be. That's how you used to be able to remove that. You had to do it in camera. You would rewind the camera and then expose that again. We don't have to do that, but the same idea applies. So here I have a, a car that was obviously not shot on a white background. It was cut out of the background and has a mask. So in Photoshop, if you look on the right hand side, you'll see a mask. And what's important is if we zoom into these areas, you'll notice that the, the very fine edge of something smooth like the edge of the car is not a hard edge. Although when we zoom out, it looks like a hard edge, it is not. If it's a hard edge, it looks fake. Um, and, and the difference here is between how many bits of information. And if you've heard of the term um, an 8-bit image, if you have an 8-bit mask or an 8-bit alpha, that means you have 256 levels of color of, of black and white, between white and black, so it's not a hard edge. Um, a GIF, and yes, I call it a GIF, um, or GIF, that transparency is one bit, and it looks like crap, and it's a hard edge. It's basically, you're, the technology says a pixel is turned on or turned off, and you pick one color, and that's the transparency. But in Photoshop files and TIFF files and alpha channels in video in general, you've got 8-bit transparency, so you have a nice, smooth transition between it. It looks more natural. But in a hard edge like a car, it still has a tiny bit of, of gray in the edge to, to smooth it out. I'm gonna show you an example of one bit alpha in a second. Now, how would someone normally draw uh, a, uh, this transparency? They would do it with a path. So I'm gonna turn everything off here and just show you the path. So here is a vector path that was drawn as a mask. A path by default is just that. It is a path. It can have a level of anti-aliasing on the edge. And the anti-aliasing is what we're used to. We don't see things that aren't anti-aliased anymore on the computer, but you, they just look much better. So with this as a path, you can't see the transparency, but you turn it into a selection in Photoshop, and then that selection turns into a mask. But the path is a good way to draw that out. So if you needed to save an alpha, then here's where the alpha would be. And if you need to save that in a format, so in the file menu, if I choose Save As, and we choose something like TIFF, 
you'll notice one of the choices is to keep the alpha channel. If you don't have an alpha channel in your uh, Photoshop file, that option won't become available. Just so you know, when you see that alpha channel thing show up, it's like, oh yeah, I, I happen to have an alpha channel. Not every format supports alpha channels. JPEGs don't. Sometimes they will be stripped out. Photoshop will remove things or it will give you an error that you have an extra channel that's in there. So that is the alpha channel. Okay, so if we look at this, that's a mask. The alpha channel is a channel that's sitting there. The mask is applying itself to this layer. See how that works? Other programs that you is, that would use the alpha channel need to turn that on. So they would say, yes, use the alpha channel. Now let's look at, I mentioned one bit transparency. Let's go look at the difference between eight bit and one bit transparency. So we'll see the edges of her hair, very soft. And if we look at the mask, you can see the mask is organic and beautiful and wonderful. Okay, so let's turn that off and turn her on with one bit transparency. Look at the edges, they look like garbage. Let's look at the mask. That is a one bit mask. You can see either the pixels are on or the pixels are off. All right, so that's alpha channels and that's masks. Now let's talk about mats, um, alpha mats and luma mats in Premiere Pro. All right, the first thing I wanna show you is black and white. This is something that looks exactly like a mask in Photoshop. What we're looking at is a green screen. So if I turn on ultra key, you've got a green screen. When I remove that green screen, then I can remove the background. If I want, I can turn on the transparency grid so we can see that level of transparency. So this is a video that I'm removing the background. But if I export this out, that background will be solid black. It won't have a checkerboard and won't have transparency unless I save it with an alpha channel, and that is not always an option. You have to find a, a, a format that supports it. And one of my favorite formats in the new versions of Creative Cloud is the Cineform, GoPro Cineform format. One of the, the uh, options is to have 10-bit, 12-bit uh, with alpha. So just to show you what this looks like, in the ultra key effect, you can look at the alpha channel. So that is exactly what it is. All right, so let's look at mats. You might recognize this from my um, other tutorial on using track mats. And if we turn the track mat off, then what you're looking at is an object coming up from the bottom. And when I turn the track mat on, that track mat effect simply tells the video to add itself to the track mat. What's important here is that there are two choices, mat alpha, mat luma. The mat alpha is the transparency. So that black rectangle has a fixed size and after the size, the alpha is not there. So it's based on the alpha of that shape. If this was a blurred rectangle, then you would get a, a, a soft edge instead of a hard edge between that. The color of this does not matter. So this is a black rectangle. Let's go over here and look at this sequence that I have, bunch of these in here. If I open this up, I purposely colored them red because it doesn't matter the color. It matters, what matters is the alpha. The transparency that's around the outside edge is what's hiding this. And again, if I turn the transparency grid off, it's over black, okay? So that is the um, alpha mat. Um, let's go and look at a luma mat. So here I've got a video and on top of that, I've got a black and white video it doesn't have to be black and white, but I've got a black and white video. And if I turn on the track mat for that, you'll see the track mat simply says, the video is inside the track mat. And you can see it, we're not on alpha, we're on luma. 
If I invert that, then the opposite takes place. And if I turn on the transparency grid, I've got a hole in my video. If I place another video be beneath that, then now it shows through in that hole. You follow me so far? That's a luma mat. What is a luma mat? Based on the luminosity of whatever that is. I'm using a black and white image. Well, it's actually grayscale because there is a little bit of gray in those edges. But I could throw in any image on top of this or any video or anything, and that could be the luma mat. As long as there's enough contrast. There isn't enough contrast, you could run an effect on the, uh, the image you're using as the luma mat and maybe Convert it to black and white. Increase the contrast. Push the shadows down. Invert this. There's an enormous amount of control in track mats. So that's good. Now let me uh, have one last look inside Premiere Pro on a mask because we also have, you haven't seen this tutorial that I added where I'm taking away the front of that car. So I'm going to zoom in a little bit so you can see that. And what we're looking at is a mask and the mask hides that. If we turn the bottom off, you can see we get transparency based on the mask. Okay, one last thing to tell you about this mask. It's not feathered, but it's anti-aliased. You won't see one bit alpha. Remember that crappy look in Photoshop? Just by the very nature, this mask and the masks that you would have in After Effects you, if you have zero feathering, you still have anti-aliasing. You can't, there's no reason to make these one bit. They're just eight bit by nature and they look good. Okay. Whew. So we look, we looked at masks, alpha channels, luma mats, alpha mats, and masking tools in Premiere Pro. What is the holy grail of all of this? Rotoscoping. Oi, let's go have a look at that in After Effects. Here I've got a video of a surfer and you see all of those little colored dots, those are paths. Somebody did that by hand. Somebody manually moved and keyframe. You wanna see the keyframes in this? Look at this, look at this, look at that. Look at all these freaking keyframes in here, okay? So when someone asks me, hey, how do you remove the background when there was no green screen. That's how you do it. This could have taken hours, days, weeks, or months of work. I'm going to turn this to alpha so that we're looking at the alpha. Look what's happening in this one. We get the mask that was drawn around the surfer plus we get this soft edge around the actual spray. How was that done? Well, that was done, let's go back to RGB. This is using an extract effect. See that? So they use the actual splashing of the water and extracted um, a, an alpha channel out of that because the water is kind of sort of almost black and white. It's, it's the spray and then a, a, a different color background. So when you run that on there, you can remove some of this. This doesn't always work, but in this example here, how are you going to draw a rotoscope around the spray? You won't. But after Effects is really the king of all when it comes to this level of masking, transparency, and rotoscoping. It can do all of it. It can do tracking, matting, luma, alpha, and use Photoshop files and stuff from, from Premiere Pro. That is the highest level and easily the most complex. It's where you get the absolute best results for working with visual effects and removing things. All right, but it's also the one that would just 
it's, it's really hard stuff. So please, if you ask me, how do you remove the background? Remember the surfer guy and all those millions of points in there and uh, what it takes to do that. So now hopefully you, in your bag of tricks, if somebody asks you for a Luma mat, an alpha channel, a rotoscope or a mask or a mat, you have a better understanding of how to deliver those tools. All right. Hopefully you found this informative. If you're new to Video Revealed, take a moment and subscribe. You want to support us a little more? Join us over on Patreon for as little as $1 a month. Till next time, I'm Colin Smith, and it's my job to get you looking your best.